Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome to the first Journaling on a Budget Extra. And this series is going to be on making the lap book. When I showed the lap book before I went to our daughters in Oklahoma, everybody wanted to see a process video, so we're going to do this process video. I'm going to do all of the videos before I start putting them up so that I know that I've actually finished before you start watching. That way I'm not going to get halfway through and you know get sidetracked and not ever finish it. Um, which is something that I can do easily. So I am going to get this series done for you. I think that I will probably put them up uh, one day at a time, just um, one right after another. And um, so we're going to get started. If you're seeing this, that means I've actually finished it and you'll be able to go through the process with me. So I already started. I did this video once and I made a three and a half inch spine and that was just way too big. Seemed like a good idea. It was not. Um, that made the book oh, approximately that wide from corner to corner. It was just, well, if I put this one on here, it was just way too wide. It was about like that. So I went ahead, ripped it apart. And um, so some of these steps I'm just going to talk you through because I've already done them. Um, but we'll get there. So what I did was I bought two books at the Dollar Tree that were exactly the same. So I'd have two books the same size. You don't have to do that. And this book is still going to be about two and a half inches wide. And so if you don't want your book that wide, then these books are each about an inch a piece. If you don't want your finished project to be two and a half inches wide, then go ahead and start with books that are just about a half an inch wide. Then you'll wind up with about a one and a half inch book when you're done. So um, so the first thing you're going to do is you just need two books the same size. You don't have to get them at the Dollar Tree. If you have two books at home that are the same size, you know, go ahead and get those. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to use a razor knife and you're going to cut along the edge being careful not to cut your spine because you want your spine to be in good solid shape. So go ahead and cut along both sides to remove the inside guts of your book so that you have your cover. And if you see a cover that you just love, remember that the, the, the front cover you can make go upright, but the back cover will be upside down. Um, so if that's going to bother you, you want to um, think about that before you do it. So these are very plain covers, so it doesn't really matter. But because we have to put them together this way, this one is right side up, but this one I'm going to have to turn. Well, technically, it's not upside down. It's just kind of backwards. So, and then what you're going to be left with is this. And, oh, it is going to be upside down because I'm going to leave these. I left the two front um, cover pages in. I don't know if I'm going to use those or not, but they were hard to get out, and so I left them there, and I may use them. So I'm going to do it like this so that I've got them on the outsides in case I decide to use them. So, And then I just used an old game board, and I did not desecrate a game. I don't do that. I have over 100. Actually, I probably have over 200 board games that are complete. Um, but when I go to like the Goodwill Warehouse and they just throw things around, I pick up the boards if they're just laying in... Um, if they're just laying in the bins there and um, or I'll buy games that do not have all of the parts to them but then I use the parts like the game boards and the little game pieces and stuff in projects so um, I did desecrate books but I didn't desecrate a game and so what we're going to do is we're going to cut a spine for our book and now our spine these are an inch wide double check that just barely over an inch, about an inch and an eighth. So that's going to give us two and a quarter inches. So I went ahead and I cut my spine to two and a half inches. So that'll leave us about a quarter of an inch play and um, give us a space to put a writing book in the center when we're done. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our carpet tape. I am working on a plastic tablecloth. Um, whenever the holidays are over. If you look for plastic tablecloths at like Walmart, they'll have them super cheap. Sometimes I'm working on a Christmas one. This one I think was Thanksgiving. Um, but um, they work great for masks or for covers when you're working on your table or something like that or even your desk. And they last a really long time. If you get them at the Dollar Tree, those ones don't last. I've tried them. They rip apart and everything. But the heavier ones at Walmart work great. So we're going to take some of our carpet tape 
and I'm going to put it about half on the board and then some of it sticking out. So about half and half. Doesn't have to be measured or perfect. And then I'm going to do it again over here. And then I'm going to put one in the middle just to help make it really solid. You want your base to be very solid because there's a lot going on in these books. And so, you know, you want to make sure that you have a really good solid base. I'm just kind of burnishing this tape down because in order to put a piece in the middle, I've got to remove the um, backing from the other two. I'll just get that off of there, get that off of there, and then put one more piece down the center. And the carpet tape is just double-sided tape. It's very heavy-duty tape, and I got it at Walmart. And I believe this roll cost me about around $5. Not exactly sure how much for something, I think. Just burnish that down. And I've made a mess, which I'm probably not going to be able to fix. We'll see. Okay, I'm not going to be able to undo that. So what I'm going to do, because I don't want a big lump, I'm going to come here where it's flat. And I'm going to cut it off right there where it's been over, because we're going to put more on here anyways. I'm going to get that out of my way so I don't have a great big lump. I need a little bit more. So just if something happens, just think about how you how can you fix it. I could have just folded it over and pressed it down. And I don't know how big the lump would have been, but I just didn't want to have a lump on it. Now what we're going to do is take this off of here. If I can get it, there we go. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. Now let's see how wide that tape is from outside to outside. That tape is about four inches, so that's good. I have cut a piece of muslin that's about four and a half inches wide, and I'm going to cut it just a little bit longer about an inch, so I have about a half an inch sticking out at the top and about a half an inch sticking out at the bottom. And I am going to lay this down and just kind of center this on that muslin. Now, muslin is just a cotton fabric it used to be a very cheap fabric. I'm not sure if it's a real cheap fabric anymore because a lot of people are using it for different things. Um, so you don't have to have muslin. Any cotton fabric will work. A piece of a, a cotton shirt will work. Um, you know, you kind of probably don't want stretchy fabric because you don't want it to stretch. You want something that is solid. And, um, but you don't have to have muslin. I got some on sale. And so I picked it up. Alrighty. And then what we're going to do. Oh, and I tried to center it this way too, so I would have a little bit of this edging sticking off. It's a little crooked, but I can't fix it now. So it is going to be what it's going to be. Now I am going to leave a gap that's about the width of my book here. so that it will fold up nicely. So we're going to put that there. And I'm going to need to put a piece of carpet tape here. Because I definitely want that to stick down also. Now we are going to put a piece of fabric over the back of this when we're all done. 
and then that will stick it down even better but we just want to make sure that this is not we want to make sure that it's stuck here and if you don't have the carpet tape you don't have to have it you can use wet glue you definitely can't use stick glue even if it says it's permanent I don't think I would try it but Fabri-Tac tacky glue any of those just lining that up there we go and now what I'm going to do is put some no, I think that we're going to cover this with paper, so I'm not going to cover it with fabric right now. But now when you bend this up, there is room for the book to go ahead and bend. Um, and when you close this up, this is what your book is going to look like. So this is the basis of our, our lap book, and it's going to have a space in the middle where we can put a writing book. I really enjoyed my writing book in mine, so I definitely want to make them. We'll always make them that way because I used that part the most. Um, it was good to keep notes so that later on I could go do other things in there. So this is what we have so far. So it opens up like that, and then it opens up like that. These books are so big that they're going to be hard to keep in frame and to show you the whole thing at once. But now that we have our base, now we can decide where to start and go from there. So this is the end of the first part, and I will be back to show you what we're going to do next as soon as I get it figured out. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.